Hello, everyone. I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your AMAC podcast, Better for America. If you haven't yet done so, hit that subscribe button so that you never miss a BFA episode. Now, today I am honored to have with us the co-founder of Turning Point USA, Mr. Charlie Kirk. Now, Charlie Kirk is not just a man with great ideas, but a man of action. In 2012, he helped form Turning Point USA, which is a student-centric conservative group in over 2,000 high schools and colleges with over 250,000 student members. Charlie Kirk is a force for the greater good, and today I have the genuine pleasure of welcoming him to the show. Charlie, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Really an honor to have you here, and what an extraordinary profile you have uh, really cut in the modern realm of conservative thinking. Uh, you know, uh, when people like uh, Russell Kirk and, and Bill Buckley uh, did for older conservatives, you're doing for the younger conservatives, and it really does matter. Uh, in many ways, you're, you're defining the future of America with your leadership, and there are so many things that we could start with, but I do want to dive into uh, an issue that is, uh, it really isn't going away, and this is the idea of teaching that racism and Marxism through critical race theory is uh is occurring. It's infuriating so many of us, especially our over 2 million AMAC members. Can you share with us, Charlie, what do we need to know about critical race theory and its teachings? And how does Turning Point USA make their voices heard on this very important issue? Well, first, I love AMAC. Love partnering with you guys. It's great. And I think we have some really exciting and fun things ahead. Uh, yeah, look, the issue of education is a top issue right now for good reason. And we don't talk about it as much in recent months for understandable reasons, inflation, gas prices, the open border. But if you talk to moms and dads, especially in suburban areas across America, they are outraged about what's happening in our nation's schools and their kids' schools. And so, look, we need to be aware that there is a concerted and deliberate campaign to try to separate a child from their parents and also the values that they were raised with and any connection to their country. Uh, that's, that's happening every single day. So look, AMAC members need to know very clearly that when you send your child to grade school or elementary school, middle school or high school, that they're gonna be under attack. Now they might go to a wonderful school and there might be no liberals. I'd love to learn about that place. They could tell me about that. Maybe it's a Hillsdale charter school, but there's not many out there. Instead, it is much more likely they're going to a public school where they're gonna be preyed upon. Uh, by teachers with bad ideas, uh, that they are going to be subverted by radical gender and queer ideology. Uh, I went to high school 10 years ago. 10 years ago was my high school graduation. And it was it's a different planet. The country has changed profoundly and not for the better when it comes to education. We didn't talk about transgenderism or any of that nonsense. And guess what? We all got along. I went to a high school where I was, a, as a white male, was a minority. 53% English as a second language high school, Wheeling High School in the service of Chicago. And it was racially diverse. It was linguistically diverse. And no one cared. No one talked about race. We all got along. We, we didn't judge people based on their skin color or their background. But it's like, is that person a good person? Can you trust that person? And now we have hyper-racialized every possible situation. And it saddens me because I've lived through this 10-year transformation. I believe they're, start, they're starting to be pushed back against it, thankfully against these charlatans that are pushing diversity, equity, inclusion, all this nonsense. But AMAC members need to know this is going to be a fight, and it's a fight we have to win. Yeah, and, and critical race theory completely contradicts Martin Luther's uh, Martin Luther King's idea that one day we should all be known by the quality of our character, not the color of our skin. And it seems to almost reimagine uh, the or uh, eliminate the American dream. Uh, we're, we're telling people, young people, that the American dream cannot be achieved by all, only some. And this is where AMAC members are really concerned. We're watching out and doing a lot of work here. So we appreciate the work that Turning Point USA is doing. Uh, Charlie, you've been such a consistent voice on so many issues. And um, uh, we're about to see the infamous uh, Roe v. Wade decision now overturned and, and trust restored to the Constitution, returning all decisions about abortion to the states. Uh, how do you see abortion and states' rights? And then as you watch the left react to this, uh, as protest protesters are really edging up violence and, and Supreme Court justices are really put in fear at their own homes, uh, and we've got national leaders like Pelosi and Schumer uh, and the White House that are fanning the flames uh, of public emotion uh, instead of urging respect for the Supreme Court. Uh, how dangerous is the left's really rule or ruin approach for, for our society and for the country as a whole? It's very dangerous. Um, I support the decision, obviously, and praise God for Donald Trump 
who put in Amy Coney Barrett, Kavanaugh, Neil Gorsuch, and we should thank them for ruling correctly here. Gorsuch has been uh, quite, well, we think that where they're going to rule correctly if the decision is as it says it is, and I believe it will. Um, Gorsuch has been questionable on some other decisions recently, unfortunately, but he's been great on this, thankfully. So yeah, look, I totally support the decision. I'd love to see, obviously, abortion outlawed on a federal level, but to bring it back down to the states, let states make their own choice, I think is a very prudent and moderate step. Now, look, the left's reaction at first was very predictable, but I'll be honest, I think they've a little fizzled out. I mean, they're not nearly as loud on this issue or as insistent as we would have thought they would be. I mean, if you would have told me three to four years ago that there would be a time where Roe versus Wade would be repealed and be sent down to the states, I would have potentially conceived a situation, at least in my head, where it would make the Floyd riots look like child's play. And we haven't seen that. I mean, we've seen kind of some hyper liberal activists in very liberal pockets of America harassment of Supreme Court activists, Supreme Court justices' homes with activists, but we certainly haven't seen the massive swaths of people that we saw in the summer of 20. And I think there's two explanations for this. We just talked about this on our podcast, the first of which I think we have a fatigued nation right now. I think people are very tired. They're physically tired, they're mentally tired, they're spiritually tired, and they're just tired of being upset. They're like sick and tired of being sick and tired. Um, they went from the Floyd race thing to the COVID tyranny, to vaccine mandates, to mass compliance, to having to have this mandatory support for the proxy war in Ukraine. I think people are just kind of sick of kind of the next thing. And th that's one of the reasons why this is fizzled out. The second reason, I just don't think there is the broad based kind of left wing support for radical abortion policies that that the media has told us that there is. I don't think it's a winning issue for them across all demographics and spaces like it like it could be. I mean, the black community, the Hispanic community are largely and overwhelmingly pro-life communities. And it's real, this is really being driven by upper middle class, white liberal women who are the most pro-choice people in America. They have their own very strong opinions on it. But I just don't think this is a political winner by the Democrats. I don't. I don't see the kind of enthusiasm. I mean, I have the New York Times right here. I flipped through the whole thing. Not in one page do they mention the abortion thing. Not one page. And that's a big deal. And they're talking about Ukraine, they're talking about racism, they're talking about everything else. It seems like they've kind of trial ballooned it and it failed. Yeah, it sure does. And and those on the left and those that are protesting, uh, you know, that are pro-abortionists, they want to ignore all the science. I mean, they just want to ignore all the science. And and you're right, thank God that we've got some, some good originalist uh, judges there. Uh, and thank God for Donald Trump. Uh, your insights are so essential. So I do want to ask you uh, something that you were especially, I think, able to talk about as it really affects uh, high school and college sports and academics. Now, many see the crazy idea from the left that we have 72 genders and that we have to kowtow to every woke assertion, uh, and in particular, the intrusion of transgender issues into girls' bathrooms and their locker rooms. And uh, this is a direct attack on both biology, science, uh, and really on the hard-won Title IX victories. Uh, how do you see this issue playing out ahead? And do you see this as a threat uh, to the gains that biological women and girls have made in the past half century? Yes. And the feminists are almost nowhere to be found. There's some good ones. Kara Dansky, Abigail Schreier, they deserve credit. Um, Naomi Wolf have been really good on this. But largely feminists are just allowing all the kind of complaints they've had. So look, I'm not a fan of like third wave feminism at all. I want to be very clear. I think their complaints are insane like that we live under this patriarchy is just not true. None of the numbers show it. None of the data shows it. None of, and however, I will say though, that at the fundamental basis of third wave feminism though, is at least we are women and you aren't. <laughs> so I, I could buy into that, right? So, I mean, at least kind of from a very bizarre kind of alliance, if you're willing to say that biological women are a category that you can't wish yourself into existence and that there are needs, wants, and concerns that women have to deal with that men don't, sign me up. Like, I think that's actually phenomenal. And it's actually civilizationally critical. They're now basically saying, oh, just kidding. Um, being a woman is a state of mind, not biology. And that anyone can exist themselves into it or they can will themselves into that existence, which completely invalidates what feminism is all about. Fe the whole idea of third wave feminism is that our chromosomal structure, our bone density, our muscle mass, our predisposition by being more emotional than you know rational or reasonable at times makes us exploited by stronger men who aren't as sophisticated. I'm oversimplifying, but that's some of the feminist literature, right? But now it's just complete silence, and which I find to be fascinating. Uh, it's bad for the country, uh, to be perfectly honest. But 
there's there's a lot of different reasons for that. So yeah, look, I mean, this is a war on women. Uh, Abigail Schreier's book is unbelievably good on this. I think it's called the war on or the the war on girls or something. It's just terrific. Read it a while ago. But yeah, I mean, this is any parent or grandparent that has a daughter in their life or a granddaughter, they're entering a world where they're going to be exploited by men thinking they're women, which hilariously was always the main complaint of the feminists. Unbelievable. Thank you for that. Thank you for that tie-in because it, it really is. You have to sit and think about the craziness behind all of this. Uh, just really unbelievable. Uh, let me ask you, Charlie, how did you get to where you are? What motivates you and inspires and really inspires you and makes you focus so intently on all of this? Uh, and, and how did you come to this mission? Uh, and, and do you think other young Americans may also find uh, that the, the America that, that they want to lead, that they want, uh, that they can stand up for, for that America and be counted to preserve the greatness of our country and the goodness of our country? But first, um, tell us a little bit about you, uh, because you've done so much. Well, thank you. Uh, it's been 10 years of doing this. It's been a lot of activity, a lot of motion. Uh, we're very blessed in more ways than one. Um, yeah, look, you said an interesting thing, which is what you want. Uh, I'm a big believer in the will um, and in kind of the power of what you choose and what you dedicate yourself to. Uh, I am a believer in free will as a Christian. Uh, I know that that's a theological dispute amongst, I'm, I don't care, like I'm not going to get into that, but I do believe that God gives us the ability to choose and that you can uh, have your own agency. And so you could use the will towards many different things. You could submit to God's will, which I would obviously uh, prefer for all human beings. You could have the will to pleasure, the will to power, uh, or the will to meaning. Um, and you know, the will is talked about a lot in the scriptures. Jesus said very clearly that I'm not going to the cross willingly. I'm going to the cross obediently, which is a submission to the hierarchy under God. It's very interesting. And so um, I didn't do this myself is what I'm getting at. And what keeps me going and what is the drive is the will to preserve things that matter and the will to protect a country. And so that's what gets you through impossible times, right? And so um, I think that the kind of Western interpretation at times of kind of a human being's will is very, um, it's very myopic. But if you look at kind of any success story or anything meaningful, the greatest man to live in the 20th century, I have a picture of him right up here in our studio, Winston Churchill. If there is not, there's no greater, I think, depiction of a man's will than Winston Churchill. He had every reason to sue for, sue for peace, every reason to surrender, every reason to give up. And he said that we're going to fight on the beaches, we're going to fight in landing grounds, we're going to fight on the streets, uh, we will never surrender. That, that is a statement of the will. And that's something I think that we in the West need to reassert. So that's a long winded way of saying that I, I want to save the country and I'm willing to do what's necessary. We have this in common, and I love that you say it. Um, and this is exactly what we encourage our members, you know, certainly stand up. Uh, we want each and every voice to be counted. Help us preserve this great nation and the goodness of the, that this nation. And it's impossible without God. Uh, and, I, you know, if that offends some, well, um, I, I can only speak for what I know to be true for me. And uh, it's exactly what motivates us here at AMAC. So thank you so much, because I am so intrigued, always intrigued and, and uh, to learn, uh, you know, what makes other people stand up and be counted? Uh, what makes other people uh, show courage? Uh, and where you show courage, uh, so many other people find themselves being more and more brave. So I want to thank you. How can people listening hear more about you, uh, perhaps get involved if they've got uh, younger folks? Uh, tell us about um, how people can get involved I I I to support your mission and hear more of you. You mentioned your podcast earlier. Yeah, they could take out the uh, podcast app on their phone and subscribe to The Charlie Kirk Show. Uh, get involved at Turning Point USA, tpusa.com. We have a giveaway right now of a gift of any amount. You get my latest book all about the conservative and biblical response to the Great Reset. So you guys can check that out at tpusa.com and would love to stay in touch. We're fighting on the front lines every single day. Uh, we have a civilization to save and we're doing something meaningful and measurable to help make that possible. That's really great. I do want to ask you one final question because you are right in the middle of so much. So as you see the 2022 elections coming at us and you speak with students and so many other people, uh, do you have any predictions about how things may uh, turn out this November? I think they're going to be very favorable for conservatives. Uh, I still have plenty of concerns about election integrity that I don't think Republicans addressed correctly, but we did make some changes but a lot of the kind of nonsense and shenanigans usually happens on the margins. 
I don't think this is going to be on the margin election. I think this is going to be a complete and total bloodbath, to be perfectly honest, for the Democrats. I want it to be a political extinction event of the woke Democrats. Um, you have Elon Musk, Joe Rogan, Bill Maher, and others that are all just hammering the Democrat Party on almost a daily basis. Republicans seem to be getting their act together. They're talking about the right issues generally. They're wrong on some stuff like the Ukraine stuff. They're on another planet. But generally, they're talking about inflation, crime, open borders, and the disintegration of the country, which I think is a great way to try to unite um, the conservative base and also the center right base. So look, I think it's going to be great, but we have to get involved in primaries, select good candidates, and do not let your guard down. These Democrats are treacherous. They're going to do everything they possibly can to try to pull a fast one before the election. Oh, Charlie, thank you so much. Thank you for all that you're doing for your inspiration you. and your persistence and your, your clarity of thinking uh, and your leadership. It was uh, just such a real pleasure to spend this time with you and to know that there are so many strong, uh, young conservative leaders really helping to protect the future of our exceptional nation. Uh, so thank you again. We're grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I want to thank everybody who tuned in today. Thank you for tuning in. And if you haven't downloaded the AMAC News app, go ahead and do that. You can watch this show. You can listen to this podcast, track breaking news uh, right there on that news app. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow, like, and share wherever you are on social media. Until next time, I'm Rebecca Weber, and this is your podcast, Better for America. Thank you for being here. God bless you. Until next time, have a great day, everyone. You're listening to the Better for America podcast presented by AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. To learn more about AMAC and all it has to offer, visit us at www.amac.us.